those of you who've been around on the channel for a while will know that I am something of a football expert. And through hours upon hours of extensive statistical analysis, studying of form guides, watching football matches, and really getting under the bonnet and having a dig around in the game of professional football, I've come to a conclusion. Norwich aren't very good. Let's see if we can do something about that. Hello folks and welcome along to another special little standalone video here on the channel in which I try and save Norwich City, who at the time of recording, 10 games into the Premier League season, have won zero games, scored three goals and, uh, I mean, it's pretty clear they're getting relegated this season because they're not very good. Uh, they sold their best player in the summer, haven't really replaced him. The squad's clearly not good enough for the Premier League and it's all a bit of a mess. And I'm going to try and fix that over the course of this one season. Is it possible through wheeler dealing in the transfer market to save Norwich from relegation in this Premier League season? You're about to find out. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on, leave a thumbs up on the video, all that good stuff, especially if you want to see more stuff like this. I'm dabbling a little bit in these one-off videos for FM22, and for me to keep dabbling, you need to keep supporting them. You enjoyed the Newcastle one we did the other day, Let's see if you ignore, enjoy one that's kind of the opposite because Norwich don't have the money to spend that Newcastle have to spend. In fact, specifically, Norwich at the start of FM22 have a transfer budget of £10 million. And I was a little bit surprised because obviously they'd sold Buendia. And to my not quite as up to date with football knowledge as I thought I had, I thought they'd kind of forgotten to do any incoming transfers this summer. But it's not actually the case. They actually spent if Football Manager is to be believed, £45 million in the transfer market this summer just gone. So they took the £33 million they got for Buendia, added to it, and brought in a whole load of players, including stealing a young player from the club I support, Peterborough. Should have got more for him. Um, but £5 million on a goalkeeper in the shape of Angus Gunn. Um, £9.5 million on Milo Rashika. Um, striker slash winger, who the game now values at 20 to 23 million pounds. I mean, he looks like everything you would want in a football manager striker with 18 acceleration, 15 pace. That's pretty much all you need to score goals in this match engine. But um, he's never really done it throughout his career. And the fact that Norwich have only scored three goals this season suggests he's not doing it in real life either. Ben Gibson came in from Burnley for £8 million. Um, they obviously got Billy Gilmore in on loan from Chelsea for the season. Um, Christos Solis, valued by the game at 23 to £33 million. He's a striker or winger over on the other side. £9.5 million for a 19-year-old who's only got one season under his belt. Clearly, high hopes for this boy. Um, and Josh Sargent, another attacker. Um, five goals for the US national team as well, at only 21 years old. A striker. Plays as a pressing forward, was at Werder Bremen, three seasons in the Bundesliga under his belt. Um, but clearly, even with all this investment in attacking players, Norwich haven't actually figured out how to score any goals. If we have a look at the squad that they've got and try and work out how we can spend our £10 million, sorting it by best player shows us that a lot of their best players are players who are here on loan from other clubs. Ozan Kabak, 21-year-old Turkish international centre-back, who's on loan from Schalke for the season, having spent some of last season on loan at Liverpool. Matthias Norman, Norwegian international holding midfield player or central midfielder, who's on loan from Rostov for the season. And Brandon Williams in the, in the mix as well, left back or right back, on loan from Manchester United for the season. And of course, the jewel in the crown at Norwich is Max Ahrens, who, if anyone's played a top-level Premier League um, FM22 save so far you'll know that Max Aarons can often go for sort of 50, 60 million pounds. I know I tried to side him in my Newcastle save and was put off by just how expensive he is, but he's got two years left on his contract and another year on an extension clause. So it's a player who's not going to be able to walk away for nothing. He's an England under 21 international. And I think a decision probably has to be made about whether we're building the team around him or cashing in and using that money to rebuild the squad. I think you probably know where I'm going with this. So the plan is we're going to try and sell Aaron's for as much as we possibly can and reinvest the money into basically rebuilding this squad into something that can survive in the Premier League. 
Timo Puki, I mean, he's a great championship striker and he exists in the Premier League as well, apparently. 11 goals in the Premier League. Last time we was here, I remember him getting a Premier League Player of the Month because you got a Player of the Month card in FIFA 21, I guess it would have been. 20, FIFA 20? It must have been, not 21. Either way, he had a little purple patch last time he was in the Premier League. Not so this time. I say again, Norwich have only scored three goals this season. But looking at it on the basis of star ratings, it looks like a squad that's fairly evenly balanced with talent across the entire squad. But as we know, they're not good enough, which means we probably need to replace in pretty much all areas. It'll be fine. The media thinks we're going down. I've got some transfers to do. I'll be back in a few minutes. So I have made it through until the end of deadline day on the 31st of August. You can see we played a few games. It's not exactly been the best start we could hope for. Three games gone. We've only got one, one point on the board. And one of our best players, pierre Lise Melou, has broken his leg, which is just terrific. Really good news. Three and a half million pounds signing in the summer. All those cons consecutive seasons playing in a major European top flight. And he broke his leg before kicking a football. So that's that's just super. But we have done a lot of transfers. Um, the one thing we haven't done is been able to sell Max Ahrens. So we've kind of had to clear out some of the Deadwood or players that I think might become Deadwood and try and kind of fill the gaps more creatively. So uh, Kenny McLean has gone to Brentford for £2.8 million. And um, we've also sold Luca Rupp to Burnley for £3.4 million. Burnley seemed to buy a lot of my cast-offs in these one-off saves. Jacob, uh, Jakob Sorensen, Jacob so he's gone to Michelin for £1.5 million. Um, and Adam Ida. This one stung a little bit because if you've been watching my Twitch save with Peterborough, streaming this afternoon, you should come and watch. Adam Ida is brilliant. Um, in the championship. And that's the problem throughout this Norwich squad. And he probably would have developed into quite a good striker for us, but we're not really interested in developing players long-term. He's not going to score goals for us in the Premier League this year. Newcastle were giving us £6 million for him. Let's take it, use it to reinvest and buy a striker who's going to score goals now. So that one, that one did sting a little because I would have liked to have kept him. But when it became clear Aaron's wasn't going anywhere... We had to raise funds from elsewhere to be able to bring in the players that I wanted to bring in. And my transfers start from here. So first one is Samuel Lino, who is a Brazilian. Of course, I was going to bring in Brazilians. It's a common theme. I've raided South America. Lots of cheap talent there in Norwich actually don't have a lot of uh, foreign players in their squad. So there's capacity in the squad to load some of these in and still be able to meet the squad registration requirements relatively easily. So Samuel Lino, uh, Brazilian, 21 years old, can play up front or on either wing. He's quick. He's he's a decent finisher. I mean, he's just a player who might score some goals for us. That's what we're hoping for. He hasn't done so far. But we were hoping for someone who might score some goals for us. I've got nine goals last season in Portugal, um, so not coming directly from Brazil. Uh, but I, I would expect him to be a good option for us probably out wide because this is likely to be our starting striker Julian Alvarez Argentinian full international I've actually noticed him come up in the Arsenal save now playing for Manchester City a year further into the save than we are with this one so he's definitely someone who not necessarily always but can develop pretty well in game um he's a he's a proper advanced forward decent finisher proper goal scorer if we can get him firing um, there should be goals in him. He's already got one for us in these first three games. Comes in from River Plate for £4.6 million, which seems like an absolute steal. And I think he probably is going to be our new starting striker. He's 21 and already playing for Argentina. Or he's played twice for Argentina. But I'm taking it. He's basically messy. That's how I interpret that. How many caps did he have at 21? Probably, probably more than two. Abuna uh, Sar is somebody that we've brought in kind of in anticipation of Aaron's going. If Aaron's is going, we need another right back. So that's why Buna Sar is here. Um, he's probably not going to get as much game time as he would have done or because Aaron's is going to be in his way. But he's 29 years old. He was just a solid, reasonably cheap option. Only cost us £1.6 million. Bayern thought he was good enough to spend £7 million on back in January. So he can't have declined that far since then. Oh, in fact, it probably wasn't January. It was probably the start of last season. But regardless, been playing for Marseille for years. Bayern chucked money at him. So we've now got him cut price. And if 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 and when Aaron's goes, which will have to be January now, we'll try and get rid of him again. 
Um, Saar is ready to step in and take his place. Uh, Rade Krunic is the player we've brought in to replace, um, what's his name, Lise, whatever it is, Lise, the guy who broke his leg. This is our replacement for him. We needed a, a replacement box-to-box -box midfielder. So we've got Krunic, who's 27-year-old, Bosnian international, natural box-to-box -box midfield player. Um, he came in for £1.6 million from Milan. Another example of a big European club spending big money on him, maybe not necessarily getting exactly what they expected and sticking him on the transfer list. But you can't get away from the fact that he's still only 27. L like less than two years ago, he was valued at £7 million by Milan. And then they played him 40 times. So he's got to be worth £1.6 million for Norwich. Surely. Um, Ezekiel Barco, he's the one we spurged on a little bit. Because in my mind, this is our replacement for Buendia. One of the big problems Norwich had in real life is they sold Buendia. They didn't really replace him. Barco, Barso, Barco. He's my Buendia replacement. Can play anywhere across the attacking midfield three. He's Argentinian. He's an under-20 international. We spent £10 million bringing him away from Atlanta United in the MLS. Uh, but he was wanted by m bigger clubs than us that were interested in him. But we got in there first. He's only five foot five. What future could you possibly have from a, a little short Argentinian attacking midfielder? Probably just bin him off now. He's never going to be any good. Even if he turns out to be rubbish, look at that potential resale value. We'll be we'll be dining out in style down in the championship when we sell all these off. And then the last couple that we brought in, Anton Nedjelkov is a 28-year-old 28, 28 Bulgarian left back. We've strengthened the attack in the midfield a lot. I figured we may as well spend the last remnants of the budget on strengthening the defence as well. Fullback looked quite weak with Nedjelkov. It looks less weak. So he comes in from Ludogorets. And then the final player, Derles Gonzalez, another wide player, probably getting a little bit over in, over excited with the transfer window at this point. Um, I think this was a deadline day excitement purchase. It was. We had money left in the kitty and he was available. He might be great. He was cheap. Ultimately, if he turns out rubbish, we can probably sell him on. I don't expect him to be a key part of the squad with all of the other attacking players we've brought in, both me and the, the previous regime earlier on in the summer. But we have a lot of attacking talent now, and that means we now have a team that for our most recent Premier League looked uh, Premier League game looked very different from the Norwich team you're used to seeing in real life. Um, still got Krull in goal. In fact, it will be Gunn in goal once he's available. Um, Gunn wasn't available for that game. I think this was the only match Krull played out of the first three. So don't expect Tim Krull. Angus Gunn will be the goalkeeper. Uh, Gunn was just unavailable for this one for some reason. I don't even remember why. He might have picked up a, a little knock. But then Ned, Ned Yulkov, the new left back at left back. Aaron still in at right back with Kabak and Zimmerman in the middle. Norman and then new boy uh, Krunic in central midfield. And for now, Cantwell, Dowell, and Lino as the attacking midfield three with Alvarez up front. Obviously, we've got Barco to come in there, and he will. Um, and there's several of the other new boys that are in there as well. I'm feeling that we might end up with Rashica on one side, Barco in the middle, Lino on the left, or maybe Campbell will stay there with Alvarez up front. I think that is a front four that, if nothing else, will score more than three goals for Norwich before match week 10, which would be an improvement on real life. In fact... We already have one goal. We're a third of the way there. Beautiful. Let's see how we get on in the first half of the season. And it is fair to say this has gone better than we ever could have hoped for. 20 games gone. So just past the halfway point of the season. And we find ourselves in 13th place in the Premier League. 20 points from the first 20 games. If we have a look at the schedule, the the points are very much come in clumps. We've had some pretty miserable spells. I mean, 10 games in, we weren't much better off than Norwich are in real life. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 games in, we only had three points on the, or four points on the board. So one, no, two more than real life. One win over Wolves, though, is significant and more goals scored. Um, but we we were we were in the relegation zone and lost 7-1 to Manchester United. At that point, it felt like I was probably not going to be releasing this video. But <laughs> but we have managed to recover this little run of three matches. Absolutely crucial. Beating Brentford, Crystal Palace and Brighton each 2-0 in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games. Shot us at the table. We then managed to beat Newcastle as well. And just before 
the uh, we've we've stopped to record. We picked up another win over Aston Villa. Absolutely crucial, crucial stuff. If we have a look at who's been doing the business for us, top goal scorer, as you would expect, is Alvarez to the point where he already wants to move on to a bigger club um, to get into the national team. So, I mean, why did you come to Norwich, Julian? You, uh, you've come in, you've done quite well, and now you want to leave three months later. It's absurd. But he has got six goals from his first 19 appearances. He is getting the goals we expected he would. Timo Pukki still weighing in with a few off of the bench. Um, and Rashica in there as well with a couple. Um, Assist-wise, they're kind of being shared around. As you would expect in a Kev team, the fullbacks are weighing in with plenty of plenty of assists. And our best players, um, Me- uh, Lise Melu has just got recovered from his uh, broken leg and got two assists in that most recent game. So he's uh, he's doing all right, isn't he? Um, and then Zimmerman doing pretty well over not very many games as well. And Angus Gunn in goal after 20 games, a 7.14. Where would we be without Angus Gunn? I mean, probably in a roughly similar position to where we are now. Uh, Buna Sar, as you would expect, hasn't played really because Max Ahrens is still here. The problem we've got now is because he's not been playing, he now wants to leave. And the plan for January is still kind of sell Max Ahrens, reinvest the money. But we now probably also have to sell Sar and go and get a completely different right back again. There are quite a few players who are a bit unhappy. We've got a big squad. There's a lot of players who've not played a lot of football. There's going to be players who are going to be looking to leave. You can see there's lots of players that we've got bids in for as the transfer window is opening. Expect a lot of players to leave, a lot more players to come in. It might be that we can do the business that we want to do without having to sell Aaron's. But I think we'll probably look to sell Aaron's because we, we want money. And that brings us to the end of January. Transfer window is closed again. Two more wins on the board, so a pretty successful January, all told. Beat Watford, beat Leicester, got through to the fourth round of the FA Cup as well. And we did all of the transfers. Um, we'll get to them in a second. For now, this is the Premier League table. We are closing in on being safe. We're, we're ahead of the Kev ratio. We've got more points than games played, which is the key to the Kev ratio. Um, realistically, looking at that, another, what, four wins, five wins, and we are safe that we hit the golden 40-point mark, and that's what we've got to be aiming for in this second half of the season. I don't think we need to be aiming too much higher up the league than we already are. But as you can see from this really long list, we've sold a lot of players in January. Most notable is the departure of Max Ahrens, who, as you would probably expect, joined Newcastle. £48 million up front, uh, rising up to 57 I think, depending on appearances, and whatnot gave us lots of money to reinvest, but he's not the only one who left. And um, if we have a quick rundown of the significant sales, so Kroll went for two million pounds to Nice. Um, we also sold a couple of fringe players. Uh, Timo Pucky has gone to Dynamo Moscow for four point eight million pounds. Um, you'll see why in a minute. We just didn't really need him anymore. Likewise, Zimmerman um, wasn't didn't play as much football as he would have liked. Um, so he's gone to Brentford for three point three million pounds. And like I say, we got rid of a bunch of fringe players as well. And then the signings began. Not as many as we did in the in summer, but we spent some money in some key places and got some good players. John Swift opened things up. Um, he's a 26-year-old central midfielder slash attacking midfielder. Came in from Reading where he'd been having a very, very good season down in the championship. 11 goal contributions from 26 games, 7.09. And we could get him for a steal. He was out of contract at the end of the season. It just seemed like a, a no-brainer. Even if we don't use him, we can sell him on in the summer for a profit. Or it'll be great for us in the championship next year, which, I mean, that's always has to be part of Norwich's recruitment plan. Uh, Nikolai Stanchu, Romanian international, 54 caps for Romania. Another attacking midfielder, wide player. We're still in the hunt for goals. I still think we should be scoring more goals as a team. And the way to do that is to just to keep throwing money at attacking players. So Stanchu, definitely another one of those. Augustin Rossi is our new goalkeeper. This is why we were able to let Kroll go. He's an Argentinian, former under-20 international, 26 years old now. A four-star current ability goalkeeper. He's an upgrade on Angus Gunn. Um, he's come in straight into the team. He was playing for Boca Juniors last year. And that's our new starting goalkeeper. There's a very significant Argentinian influence now in this Norwich side. Jean-Manuel Mbom is a new 
holding midfield player, young, lots of potential, German under-21 international, can play as the a holding midfielder or in central midfield. And we're using a 4-2-3-1 at the moment, so he's likely to play a little further forward initially. And But if we decide that to just be big old chickens and play a more defence-minded system of a holding midfielder, he's the one who can drop back and do that. And crucially, got some potential for resale value again. We're starting to think in terms of, yes, but what if we get relegated? Uh, Chris Metham was just available really cheap for what he is, a real decent quality Premier League centre-back with potential as well. Only 24 years old, already 26 caps for Wales. Came in from Bournemouth um, where he's been languishing down in the Championship for the last couple of years, but five and a half million pounds sees him return to the Premier League where he did play for Bournemouth for a couple of years after his £14 million move from Brentford. He was worth £14 million then, definitely worth £5.5 million now. And you know what I'm like, six foot three for a centre-back. Yes, we'll have a bit of that. Expect him to score 15 goals in the second half of this season because we are going full-on corner exploits. We're staying in this Premier League. Um, and Ismail Casas is the final signing. I said we'd need another right-back as we'd upset um, what's-his-face... Saar and sold Aaron's. So I figured we 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 got a lot of money in for Aaron's. Let's reinvest in another fancy right wing back that we can sell on next year. So Ismail Casas, right back, can also play centre back, but a five foot nine, he's not going to. 20 years old, Spanish under 21 international, been playing for Malaga for the last few years in the Spanish second tier, but for £10 million, it's just a nice, pacey wing back. If you had to like build a prototype for my kind of right back, that is what the prototype would look like. So lots of transfers done over the course of the season, including the ones that happened before I arrived. Um, we've now brought in £105 million. We've spent 112 So it's only a net spend of £7 million, including the net spend of like £12 million that had already happened before I arrived. So actually... I've operated at a transfer profit before you all ruin me in the comments for abusing the never never and all that kind of stuff. I've made a transfer profit largely because of Max Aaron's, but a small transfer profit. And we have completely revolutionized this team. This is what the starting 11 looked like for the last match. We could finish top half. We genuinely could. We could win the FA Cup. We probably won't do either of those things. But I am pretty confident as I sit here now on the 31st of January to say we ain't getting relegated. Not a chance is this team getting relegated. And we didn't get relegated. We finished 12, 43 points on the board. The kind of season Norwich could only dream of if we have a look at the schedule to see how we did it. That to me looks like much more solid form in the second half of this season, including what is a one, two, three, four, five six match Premier League unbeaten run. Can you imagine such a thing if you are an Norwich fan? Um, if we have a look again at the players just to see who's been doing the business, Alvarez still unhappy because he still wants to leave and get into the national team setup. But 14 Premier League goals for a struggling side will have done him no harm when it comes to earning a move this summer. Realistically, he probably will go this summer. Um, but we've brought him in for £4.6 million. He's scored the goals that have kept us in the Premier League. And now if we can sell him for anywhere near that kind of value, it's just incredible business. I'll I'll have a bit of that. Barco, as the season's gone on, has got better and better. 12 um, or 10 goal contributions in all competitions. No, 12 in all competitions, 10 in the Premier League. His average rating's bobbins, but we're not going to worry too much about that because average rating, I'm about to drop a maths explanation bomb on you here. Um, averages include the really bad games as well as the really good games. And we're Norwich. We had a lot more bad games than good games. Uh, so his average rate, everyone's average rating is going to be low. That's why everyone's average rating is low. But the important thing is match winning contributions are happening. Todd Campwell, 10 goal contributions. Stanchu came in at Christmas, six goal contributions from him. There's been key things going on from those key players. Barco, more assists than anybody at uh, least Melu came in and got two on his first game back and then only two more over the rest of the season. He'd kind of been replaced in the team. It's why he only played six games. We kind of moved on beyond him. Beyond him. It was his own fault for getting injured. I warned him, don't break your leg. He, I mean, you can't, you can't account for these things. Um, what we are going to do is just look at the season review, which just popped up. Uh, in fact, we have to go to it that way. Just to show you a bit of an overview of those signings that we brought in. It's a nice way 
to present it. So signing of the season, Chris Metham. Hands up. Were your eyebrows raised when I said he was a good Premier League centre-back? There's your proof that he is. Is what we were just saying about average ratings. He played 14 games in the second half of the season and managed to average over a seven. That is no mean feat in this Norwich team. Came in and secured the defence nicely for us. Um, he was the only one, really, of the players that I brought in who played a significant number of games and got a decent rating. Actually, that's not fair. Casas as well. Um, the guy we brought in to replace Aaron's uh, 14 games, one goal, two man of the matches and a 7.09. Looks like he is going to be a little bit of a star for us as well. So two good additions to that defence. Um, but lots and lots of players came in and the squad overperformed as a result of it. We were supposed to avoid a relegation battle. We did. We finished 12th. I actually think the initial expectation this is a little bit glitched in FM22 still. It was definitely the uh, fight bravely against relegation. They've obviously upgraded that as the season has gone on. Um, but with Palace, Watford and Newcastle getting relegated, Max Ahrens is back in the championship this year. And we are a mid-table Premier League side. So, in answer to the question, with £10 million budget, can I save Norwich? I don't know what that was. But yes, I can. There's your team of the season. We finished 12th in the Premier League. That is a result. Let me know down in the comments. First, if you enjoy this kind of video, it's very different to the kind of stuff that I've done on the channel previously. But if you do enjoy it, I'll do more of it. Who would you like to see me do it with? Team suggestions, please. Down in the comments section below. I'd prefer one season projects. There are some that I could take on that would probably be multi-season projects, which could either be really long videos or short series of videos. But obviously, if it's going to take three or four seasons to do, I'm thinking redoing the Barcelona rebuild, for example, that we did on FM21, uh, but as like one episode per season, like that just spending four seasons doing that, that's a big time commitment. It will take a little bit longer to do. These ones I can knock out in a couple of days. It's beautiful. Um, so let me know who you'd like to see me do these kind of videos with. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's doing really badly. It could be someone who's doing really well. Could I do even better with them? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I probably can. Look what I've just done with Norwich. It's beautiful. If you have enjoyed it, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos and probably some more of this stuff too. Thank you very much for watching.